Greetings to the students in the DMIN Project Design course here at Regent University School of Divinity. This is your instructor, Dr. Larry Asplund, coming to you at the end of week two. I'm in the middle of a move. In fact, Wednesday, the truck comes and picks up all my stuff and delivers it, etc. So I'm just living in boxes and in my little kitchen in the apartment. So I think it's going to be okay anyway. I wanted to be able to come by this evening and welcome you to Module 2 and specifically to week 3 of Module 2. Module 2 is going to be three weeks long, as will Module 3. So I think it's important to just take some time to give you a quick introduction and, you know, a little bit of an orientation to Module 2 in our course. Uh, as a quick review, you know, Module 1 is foundational for us. Uh, it was really focused on that uh, that research question, that thesis question, the focus of your research. And so in week one in your group, you had an opportunity to uh, provide the statement of the problem question and then to provide a feedback, a feedback rather, for one another. Uh, very, very important to be able to get that clear and precise is so important because it will literally direct and focus the rest of your study, including your project. And then week two, which we're just ending, uh, was an annotated bibliography, which was just a, an exercise in uh, discovering uh, research resources. And so it drew attention to both quality and quantity and gave you a, maybe a sense to do a little bit more when it comes to a very intentional, focused uh, research, finding those resources that you need. A very good foundational exercise for us in this class. So now we're going to move forward into module two. Module two, as I mentioned, is three weeks long uh, and it will ultimately uh, involve providing an outline that you will use in composing your summary of the literature. And then finally in the last week, the actual uh, composition of the summary of the literature, which is a section in your proposal. Uh, week three, then, is what we are in front of. There are no graded assignments in week three, so you're kind of involved in this process in an ongoing way. And so that means you'll continue to do relevant uh, study and research, note-taking, etc., adding essentially to your working bibliography, and also you'll have the opportunity to consult some helpful study resources. Uh, chapter four in the appendix in Turabian, chapter two, in Cresswell, and of course, there are links to some great resources in Dr. Flynn's original PMIN 700 course as well. All of those will be relevant to what we are doing in Module 2. Uh, let me anticipate the other two weeks then. Uh, uh, week 4, we will begin with a second Collaborate opportunity. So it will be Monday evening, September the 12th at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. And during that uh, opportunity, I will unpack the summary of the literature section of your proposal very specifically, as well as have plenty of time to answer questions and interact together on that assignment. Uh, you will have uh, then in that, that week a discussion forum where you will post an outline that you propose to use in writing your summary of the literature. I will give you some resources. Dr. Chandler has a great what she calls a, a, a summary of the literature map, a literature review map uh, as a way of organizing your notes. I'll also give you a sample so you can see kind of what it would look like. There's not one, you know, perfect way to do an outline. So almost any kind of an outline, so long as it is going to be helpful in your composition, will be fine. And you will post that in your discussion forum, have some opportunity to provide feedback and then in the final week, week five, you will actually compose your summary of the literature section of your proposal. And it will be a peer review opportunity, which means that once again, it will be in your group. But you will be able to provide uh, specific relevant feedback to at least one other member of your group. I kind of would like to just give you the big picture for a moment and uh, anticipate modules two and three. In the end, all of your relevant research uh, that you are going to end up doing, and I suppose, you know, with research, you could just keep doing it indefinitely. But at some point, you have to say, you know, I think I have enough uh, to go forward. All of that relevant research will be reported in two chapters in your dissertation. 
So chapter two will be called the survey of the literature and chapter three will be called the biblical, theological, and historical context of the study. So each of those chapters will be about 30 pages, 30 plus pages. You know, if you give, if you give us 100 pages, that's too much. It has happened. Uh, if you give us 20 pages, maybe not quite enough. I think you could do a little bit more work to unpack your resources. That's your dissertation writing. That's ahead. That's coming up. And so what you're doing your, for your proposal is a briefer, much briefer summary. You're just going to hit the highlights. And so a summary of these two chapters is represented in the, in the proposal, in the sections, summary of the literature, which is module two, and the biblical, theological, and historical foundations, uh, which is the, the focus of module three. Each of those will be about 10 pages long. So you're not going to take the time to unpack any resource you're summarizing. You're hitting the highlights. Ultimately, you remember, you're writing your proposal for Dr. Flynn, who will have a sense of the direction you want to go and whether or not you've done adequate work to be able to go in that direction. And so these will be summaries, very, very important. So my recommendation to you now is to take the time to look at your notes, even if you're still adding to them, that's fine, and divide your notes into two, two parts. Uh, the first part will be the notes that are uh, relevant to resources in the scholarly literature. And then the second set of notes will be those that are relevant to material in the Bible, to Christian theology, and to church history. Uh, because those will end up being the two sections of your proposal and ultimately two chapters in your dissertation. It's possible you may have an occasional resource that gives you you know, helpful information in both of those areas. You still want to be able to separate out those uh, areas, the literature, the scholarly literature review, and what we usually call the BTH foundations, which will ultimately be, each will be a chapter in your dissertation. And so it's really an opportunity to organize, review and organize your notes, and then decide which, which of that I have are, is relevant to the scholarly literature specifically, and which is also then relevant to what I discovered in the Bible and in Christian theology and in church history. I thought it might be helpful just to take a quick moment to look at what do we mean by scholarly or our academic literature. This is what is most relevant to the summary of the literature section of your proposal. And so what do we mean by scholarly literature? Well, First of all, they're books, but specifically books that are monographs. That is to say, they're single subject books written, you know, in kind of an academic tone uh, as opposed to a popular book, perhaps, but not a Bible survey, not a Bible dictionary, encyclopedia, handbook, a general reference work. They're very specific. Now, you can maybe read those general reference works, but they're, they're not going to help your research. So I wouldn't have a footnote from them. I wouldn't include them in your bibliography. Uh, specifically, you're looking for uh, resources in the scholarly literature. Also, peer-reviewed journal and periodical articles are very, very helpful when it comes to demonstrating your knowledge of the literature. Those di doctoral dissertations are gold mines because they not only give you helpful uh, research that that author, that doctoral student, uh, conducted himself or, her, or herself, but also vast bibliographies. And so they're tremendous sources for you in the scholarly literature. So you're going to report literature that is either directly relevant to your discipline or sources that may be indirectly relevant in a cross-disciplinary literature. So you have a very clear focus of your research, but it could be you've discovered something that's kind of on the side, but helpful, but relevant. So we refer to that as cross-disciplinary literature, and it's okay to include some of that as well. So hopefully that will give you some sense of definition when it comes ultimately to writing your summary of the literature. You know, being able to uh, review the literature, being able to identify what's relevant and what isn't, what's helpful and what isn't, based on the, your, your chosen research question is a very, very important part of this process. So 
when Dr. Flynn or your chair or anybody else reads what you've done, they want to be convinced that you've done your homework. You, you know what you're talking about. You've created a background and a warrant for your project that will enable you to do excellently in your project. So we're going to start now module two in that direction. Uh, I know you've already been doing some reading, some studying, et cetera. You've taken notes, and so now it's time to begin to look more specifically at unpacking them, at outlining them, and summarizing them. So it's a very good exercise, a very good opportunity in our process. Once again, I'm looking forward to sharing that with you, enjoying the process with you. If you have any questions along the way, be sure to let, you, let me know, because I am here to serve you in this class. God bless everybody. Just have a great week three.